going into this match, I mean, we definitely want to win it. BDS is on a win streak. They lost their one game, but besides that, they're just winning a lot. Healy gets three shot. Kazi with a second. His video is the last hope for Vitality, but his team has died around him. Facing the two is always like a challenge. We don't really know what they prepared. I would like to take uh, revenge this time. There's the Pop Blossom and Pop goes BDS. Shayo, the last man standing in the top lane fray, but he'll be snipped away. We really want to just take them down because if we don't, they will get so much more confidence to beat us in the finals if we meet again. G2 dancing around Fnatic right now. Excellent push back on Hansama, meets a kill. Hero tries to turn this one right back. It's all eyes on Caps. Does he have the damage? The answer is hell. Yes, he does. Your opinions on Zach Top? Can I be honest? Looks really bad. <laughs> Ooh, Looks really bad. Okay, I've been okay. called out. When I was on PGL with Adam and he was saying that Zach wasn't that great, I was laughing a bit because I mean I definitely enjoyed playing Zach in the past and I knew BB was cooking up something, so we'll see just how, how much it sucks next week. <laughs> Bold words in our match of the week delivered by Uber Eats. Here we are, BDS and G2 taking to the stage. Those two guys leading at the front, Adam and Broken Boy naturally. Where we're going to be keeping our eyes today, but just about every single role stacked up. Our first best of five here in the LEC Winter Split. Coach is taking the stage as well as we get ready for picks and bands. I'm Dracos, joined at the desk by my outfit brother and Euphoria brother Dagda, and our wonderful third wheel, Medius. <laughs> I yeah. feel like you do it to brunch and. You kind of plan this out, and yes. I love the suspenders. No, no, we're just, we are so in sync that we just hop in. We didn't even talk yeah, about right. this. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and okay. they can't yeah. see us yet, but when they do, they're going to be impressed they're by how identical impressed. we look. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> we well, could be brothers. We're excited. Obviously, the energy in the arena is electric today, and we have two of our best performing teams from winter. The last time these two teams met was week one. Gentlemen, it did go in the favor of G2, but since then, they've had very different trajectories with BDS constantly on the upswing. A lot of criticism mainly thrown towards G2, largely towards their early game and their inconsistencies. But regardless, they did finish first at the end of the regular season due to the standings and their performance. And in playoffs so far, both these teams have looked strong. And, but that's the thing. I mean, I think G2, at least, at least in week four, had a bit of an upswing themselves. And every time we've seen these two teams face off in a best of series, it's when G2 comes out on top. In fact, every time we saw these two, two teams in a best of series last year, it was not only the fact that well, two out of the three times you saw these teams in best of series last year, it was G2 beat BDS, and then BDS were just unable to pick up any win after that as well. So it definitely G2 have gotten into the heads a little bit of these guys in the past. And we'll have to see if the same remains to do today, or if BDS can flip the script and show us a little bit more against G2, find their second series win. Technically, they won a best of one, which is kind of a series. I mean, it counts as an overall win, but that was back on a very different roster with like Syncroft and Erdote. Darius has been banned away, crucially, as highlighted by the desk. Broken Blade already locking in the Callista for Hansama on the bottom side. And now a cheeky TF hover if you somehow missed it, which would be fair because it's on OPGG and not anywhere you would see it regularly. This is a champion that's been coming up in the hands of Broken Blade. Hence, perhaps, the TF hover. That was definitely, that felt like, a, yeah, we know. We <laughs> know. <laughs> the five back-to-back -back yeah. games in your most recently played <laughs> gave it away, buddy. We know. Uh, it's, uh, They're on to them. <laughs> I respect that. But BDS going for, for tried and true. Ice has been playing a bunch of Aris this split. Uh, obviously, one of his best performing champions so far. And uh, Nuke on the Ariana. So far in the playoffs, Nuke has only played Ariana and Azia. And it, it feels like that they're going to stick to comfort for at least game one. Yeah, I think it's actually interesting to see. Oh, there's the TF anyway taken, but I was going to say for Kalista, you usually want to pair with the Renata, and usually that's taken away on the red tide whenever you see the Kalista pick, but it's G2 banned away, so you're probably going to be looking like a Nautilus or some Arleona or some kind of hyper engage here for Mickey. but uh, here's to see, I mean, Twisted Fate, I mean, this is, I was going to say in general, like a flex most times, because you've seen a top for BB you just hit on, we've seen it for our mid laners across the world, but it is also the pocket pick for Mickey. <laughs> so I'm just, I don't think we'll see it there, but it is just something he's been cooking for a while. At the very least, traditionally a mid laner, and Broken Blade has been spamming in solo queue. So we know it flexes into two positions. We'll see if a third or fourth rear its head. For now, the debates onto what the BDS first ban should be, they have locked in the Poppy. Easy to assume this is a jungler, but we've seen it flex into both positions. Still really like the Poppy in general into the composition. Vi and Kalista, you get a lot of value from Poppy. Also means that you're deterred from picking things like the Rakan. You are looking at things like a potential Nautilus, which 
perhaps BDS either want to early rotate or consider banning away. But I think the thing is the BDS need to get something here for Adam. They, I would imagine, fifth pick that at least can contest side lanes. Because at the moment you're looking at, okay, well, we got the TF who wants to try and play for sides. We're very much playing this like pick style composition here as G2. So if you end up with, I know it's probably not going to be picking, but say like a Camille top lane for BB or something like a Yone top for BB that can try and play heavily with sides with this TF, I don't think an Orianna is going to feel comfortable in that regard. And I don't think Adam, or well, unless Adam can go for something that contests like a Garen or an Olaf or something along these lines, I think. I think that's where you're going to need to try and focus your attention here is BDS. Nautilus will be the ban away, of course. Nautilus kind of one of the only remaining premier blind stick supports that we see consistently, at least in the playoffs thus far. So G2 now deciding what they want I their final ban to be. I think they might ban Garen. If they do want to put this TF top, I'm just thinking about champs that Adam plays. That Like Olaf and Garen are probably, you did mention them earlier, that, that uh, I'm just... I mean, which one do you go for? Because I genuinely think that both of them can just run a TF down, right? Yeah. And so like, that's one of the concerns that you have of blind picking this. You already did talk about the flexibility. They're going to leave it open. And I guess that the worst case scenario is if Adam does choose to blind something like the Garen, but he's going to save it for last pick. So he wants to make sure yeah. he knows exactly where this Twisted Fate is going. There are so many flexes. <laughs> Stop <laughs> flexing things. Stop picking things that could go with two roll. We got Rel who could be supporter jungle. We've got Poppy who could be jungle or top lane. And now G2 Esports have well, knowledge at least of what the enemy mid and uh, AD are, but everything else remains a little murky. Yeah, I do think, though, for G2, you got an option here. It's like, do we go 1-4 or do we go 1-3-1, one, one, right? You already have the Twist of Fate, but it's a case of like, well, there we go. It's like, right. okay, we're going to try and play this where we can uh, at least group up as a four-man unit and leave the Twist of Fate to push side lanes. But I think you need something that at least can contest mid-wave because Callista versus Varus means that it's very hard for you to just try to have that like solo split pusher if you don't have mid control. And I don't really, you can't really get that if you go for like a poke Varus in this setup. So I'm curious to see exactly what they want to try and run at this comp with. Debate here now. Tarek! I was not expecting that. Going to get <laughs> locked in. Uh, interesting choice here. You have two tanks on the opposite side, so relatively low overall damage profile. Tarek thrives against a lot of enemy melee champions when he can just auto and endlessly heal uh, via the passive, just kind of giving him that Starlight's touch heal stacks. Yeah, one of the nice things on 14.2 as well that Tarek got buffed where uh, he doesn't have unit collision whenever he has his E now. So that makes things significantly easier oh, for him in the laning phase. Easy. So yeah, it means that you can have a little bit of an easier time. Still not like Rel jumping onto you. It's going to make things like, it doesn't really matter. She's going to be in your face anyway. But certainly if you're trying to hit onto ice in this setup, not having that unit collision is going to make it very nice for you. So Rumble is the answer into the Twisted Fate. Honestly, not what I was expecting. I mean, Melee matchups into uh, Twisted Fate early on are going to struggle. My expectation was that things like the Olaf would just be able to run it down later into the game. But he's saying, you know what, I'm actually going to play for the team fights. Uh, BDS have shown to be stronger in the five versus five. Normally, most of their games end up in a very neutral to sometimes even negative state in the early game. Uh, and then in the mid game, it's where they find those great fights. And then uh, I think that they've drafted themselves a very strong team fight comp here. And it's funny because you talk about that for BDS. We've also seen inconsistent early games for G2 in some of their games. Games. For the first time, these two teams played each other, and admittedly, it was one of the first games of the split. Might have been the first game of the split. It was, yes. Yeah. It was five kills in five minutes. <laughs> they were fighting and killing each other everywhere, and I wonder if that's some of what we're going to see today, if it's going to feel a little bit differently when we have two teams that are volatile in the early game that both know that the opposition is ready to fight and face them in the mid game. But I think one of the things that worked for them super well last week was the fact that, hey, we're going to bring BB down to help out bot lane. Like, he had the Zac TP across both games where he's just like, I'm going to play for bot lane. We go for a dive, we're going to set up those advantages for ourselves, but as we start to load into the game, he actually hasn't opted for a teleport. He's gone Ghost and that Flash as well, so obviously he's gone a bit, a little bit more off the laning phase, trying to make sure that he can escape maybe if Adam's trying to chase him down, but it doesn't mean you've got less opportunities for BB to try and get down to that bot lane until he hits six, and maybe he can use that destiny there, but I think it's going to be super interesting to see how BB tries to plays this. We'll keep a track of it. Doran's Blade, the star. ADTF is the top side build. We'll see if he has any special adjustments up into the Rumble. Um, if you haven't seen this, TF obviously adjusted to support AD builds much more. But, ooh. The support for BDS coming in strong today. Normally an arena that is crowded by G2 fans. Nice to hear the BDS support stand strong today. Yeah. As a reminder, this is our first best of five of the winter splits. We're going to be seeing these teams at the very least play three games against each other. And that's why I kind of love 
the approach from G2 in game one. When I look at these comps, in terms of just straightforward execution, BDS is way simpler to execute. You've got a great front line in the form of Poppy and Rao. You've got great backline damage in the form of Oriana and Rumble. And then you've got Varus. I expect him to go towards the poke build, as we often see. But even if he does go for the on hit, uh, just a lot of potential late game damage. So BDS sticking to the style that they've consistently found success with so far this split. Whereas G2 continue to shake things up. They do have a strong bot side, but I imagine that they're going to struggle against the Varus early. In terms of this 2v2, I'm very curious as to how the Tar into Rel matchup in particular influences the control over this lane. Yeah, I think the definitely you're going to be looking at look, Hans Hammer can get a little bit of control early just with the fact that Mickey can play very far up. You got the stun that you can try and look for an ice, which has great setup to try and follow up on. But I think at the early stages, Yike is going to have to try and focus more towards topside, right? BB isn't running that teleport, so you need to try and make sure you can get maybe fourth wave, fifth wave crash so he can actually reset and match Adam's reset. Otherwise, I think you're going to fall super far behind. So I am curious to see what Yike's decision making is here like does he feel like bb's just okay to get full control into this top lane matchup without Cheo coming up and he's gonna be able to reset himself or will yike try and help him out and oh nice actually yeah. early ignite going down forcing lebron back but just gonna use the w there the crash down will be able to get out to safety caps and nuke trading aggressively in mid lane as well oriana kind of unsurprisingly taking advantage in the early matchup clockwork wind up uh you know pretty strong passive but caps Giving as good as he gets, just not quite able to keep up in terms of wave clear. Notice this ward that was dropped on the rafters here uh, from the side of BDS. Our observers are going to highlight it for us now. G2 do know that this is here, but I think a large part of this is because for anyone that's watched G2 games this split, they love the level 3 invades. They they play around their bot prior all the time. They consistently look to try and invade the enemy bot side, and they'll use the push in the bot side of the map to try and put pressure on the enemy jungle. This time, Han Summer and Mickey already looking for that early information, um, but Yike deciding it's not worth trying to go for that contest, especially given the HP of Caps right now. He doesn't think that without that mid prior, it's worth going for that skirt. Yeah, I was interested because they spotted that level 1, and Yike kind of like, faked that he was going into the enemy jungle and then you see Han Sam and Mickey move so I think that's why you have Labrov here as well to just kind of go wait are they coming in what's the plan but with Han Sam and Mickey now showing on bot side I think they're just gonna end up stepping away and again I think Yai can reset here move in towards his top side if he really wants to or contest Guttle here the options are there but I think moving up towards his top side to try and help out BB in these early stages is probably gonna be a nice shout. Looks like Broken Blade went for an early Cheetah recall picking up those boots and the refillable did drop a ward on the top side uh, under the assumption that there could be an early gank heading his way. But yeah, gonna path up towards top, assuming that this is the only safe scuttle crab for him to go for, given that his bot lane has, of course, just gone back to base. Good ward coverage, gonna spot out Sheo there. Will allow Yike to know that it is the only safe crab that he can go for. Sheo now revealed on the bottom side. Information on the enemy jungler for G2 BDS. I think it'd be reasonably confident that Vi is clearing out the top side scuttle. Haven't quite spotted that one yet, but Sheo now moving through. But again, being spotted here, gonna make it tricky. That said, bot wave about to crash. Do they want to fish for a dive on the bottom side? Looks like that's to go in for a reset from Yike to try and move down here. And Adam also kind of faked a reset in that top side. Wasn't sure if he's gonna try and go for an all in on BB just before he went for the TP play. But you can see both teams at the moment very slow. No one really wanted to step a foot wrong. You even see Yike now that he realized the wave's cleared. Gonna move back up towards his top side because that's where his comps are respawned. And while you talked about the adjustability that you have in draft in a best of five, certainly, yes, you can also afford to lose a game. A reminder that winning this series takes you through straight to the finals. Losing puts you further down in the gauntlet, going to have to face at least another opponent, uh, the victor of our first best of five next weekend. But the luxury of being able to sit at the top and kind of wait to see who your opposition is going to be is such an incredible boon to have. And both of these teams look to be the strongest in the league. So cementing yourself as the clear strongest and then getting to see all of your opponents fight for the right to face you, incredible position to be in if you can come out on top in this best of five series. Nice damage coming out from Broken Blades. For those that haven't played against uh, this ADTF before, his passive <laughs> is, uh, you, you can actually see the skill order of those highlighting in the bottom left, choosing to put an additional point in here. You usually don't skill the Q. It's not that valuable for you. Uh, you just prioritize getting your cards up and also the uh, the bonus attack speed and stuff that you get from your E as well as the on hit. Just means that those extended trades are that much harder to deal with. And this Rumble actually getting bullied out of the lane in this early game. You also just get significantly more gold on TF now as well. The fact that you have the uh, the second roll on your gold where it's weighted more right? towards one, yeah, it's absolutely insane. So it's like 
you just end up with so much extra gold in this ADTF where you're able to snowball. So I mean, the, the CS is pretty much dead even, right? And you can already see a gold lead starting to build. Yeah. And then as well, like, you're going to see him, well, now that he's hit six, like, the opportunity feels like to try and punish the BB in the early stages on this TF is kind of gone now for a Shale, where he's get the reset, you just hold back to topside with the Destiny, while also simultaneously revealing everyone on the map as G2 setting up a push on bot. Looks like for a Dragon. Ulti used primarily just to get back to that top wave, but also, as you highlighted, information gained. Yeah. They know exactly where everyone is on the map now. Information is power in the early game. And G2, they've managed to get the push in mid as well. Here comes Sheo, though. Sheo looking for an angle, might be able to find Caps. Gonna go for the knockback of the wall. Flash forward, just full committing there. Should be an easy quick kill pick up. Caps now trying to turn that one back. Nuke getting stunned from downtown by Mickey. Nice setup on the target to keep Caps standing. Nuke now gonna be in trouble. Spear stacking. Stacking the back of Nuke, but not quite enough to finish the job. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the fight, Mickey oh, the now slow. on the chase, flashing for the stun, forcing out the cleanse from Ice. But there should just be a quick turn back because Ice does not go down. BDS able to find the kill. Ice now looking to follow up. G2 over committing and getting punished in the process. Caps now trying to style, trying to get a little bit back, but just going to have to take his way back out to safety. G2 thought they smelled blood in the water. Ice was getting slowed by the Ocean Dragon attacks, but it's actually just a bait. Shale is right there. They're able to turn that play around, and Hans Sama and Caps. We're just completely nullified at the start of this play. A surprising lack of damage from both sides in that early game. A lot of people getting low, but no kills actually secured. I was wondering if Nuke... I was kind of waiting for the Shockwave to come out. I believe Nuke used it earlier in the laning phase, which is why he didn't actually have it. Because the moment the Caps was kind of thrown into the wall by Shao, I thought he was dead, right? I, <laughs> you see the poppy burst, and you forget that literally, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you can see nobody has any items. <laughs> yeah. There are no items. You're like, they're going to kill him. And then you're like, oh, wait, they can't do anything. So damage. yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the shockwave is down here because I was expecting the shockwave right here. Initial kill doesn't get it. Flash for flash. I think Han Sama thinks, you know what? I can commit onto the enemy uh, Oriana here, and I should have enough damage to do it. But he, he just doesn't. Uh, meanwhile, Shao also getting chipped away. All of the G2 members are at about half HP. But the problem here is that uh, it's easy, uh, it's easier, I should say, for BDS to turn because Caps and Han Summer are so zoned away from the follow-up fight that it's easy for Ice to turn that one around. Very well played from the BDS AD Karen. Also good recognition of their strengths. With these kind of tankier options like the Rel and Poppy, you do have good upfront burst damage. Yes, G2 in theory beats you in some capacities. And right now they're winning in deaths. LeBron beat that, buddy. 1,500 for Mickey. This is... Unexpected and oh. bad manners, but I love to see it. All right, Yike now caught out as well. Looking to keep up with Mickey here on the death count. Is Quick Pick going to come through on the jungle? Shao going to find that one. BDS taking over bottom side of the map. Great punishment. Just coming off the back, the fact that you got these early kills, and now you're like, cool, we can go for the invade. We got push on mid. You can start to set up control on bot side as well. And if you can try and get these uh, dragon stacking early, like, yes, ADTF is great in the sideline and great in the 1v1, but a TF is still a TF at the end of the day. And if you're coming into a team fight, I'd much rather a rumble ult than a TF ult any day of the week. So I think BDS, if you can start stacking these dragons, force G2 into fights, you're in a really good spot. Yeah, I mean, credit to BDS using the early advantage that they have to move into that red buff and find that advantage again. Punishing G2, great to see from them. Now the Dragon Contest, G2 want to get frisky here. Been able to recall now. Dragon going to be secured by BDS. Do G2 feel confident enough that they can force this fight? Excellent knockback. I think this is a bit of a mistake coming through from G2. I think BDS, significantly better position. Uh, good damage opportunity to try and take that Dragon. I think he should have just gone for Void Grubs. Try and get the fact that, hey, look, BB can actually put work in on these terrors if he's got a couple of those extra damages or even the ropes that can come through as well. So I think you could have cross-mapped here, but kind of missing your opportunity now. And BDS, you're having the run of the mill here in this early game. Yeah, and their only lead right now on the side of G2 is Broken Blade, and it's built on the back of TF passive um, and a single plate, which is not a good position to be because, again, the TF kit is generally weak or compensated for having his little, you know, golden compassive. He doesn't have a passive that does anything else. So tricky situation to be certain. That said, we talked about it earlier on. Both these teams, if you had to look at their weakest points of the course of the split, were usually some of the early games where it got a little bit more questionable. G2 will see if they can turn this one around as we get a little bit further in. Yike on the way down. Mickey and Han Sama looking to extend the trade. Marshall poise. I don't, I don't see how they really make this gank work though. Yike is investing a huge amount of his time to try and get this bot lane ahead. And I don't think that's the wrong play by any means, but I think BDS are doing a great job of weathering the storm. Shio really wants to clear his top side, and he's going to have an advantage just being back out on the map. 
I say that, he's actually making his way towards the bot jungle. I expected him to sort of clear towards his top and then path back towards bot to potentially help them get that push out on this next wave. With the resets coming through, maybe he wants to clear from bot to top so that he can set up for a contest around these Void Grubs. Information will be gained by Broken Blade as Adam now makes his way back out onto the map. Early Merc Tread secured for him. Even if uh, this is an ADTF, that stun card can still be very obnoxious <laughs> yeah. to deal with. Yeah. That is well, I mean, the fact that you're able to look for picks with, like, Yike and BB, you're going to do a ton of damage if you're able to play off this top side. Uh, Shale, he's actually doing such a really good job of farming that he's had the level advantage here for Yike for a little while, so I wouldn't be surprised if BDS try and push this if you do end up going for Void Grubs as uh, G2, but at the moment, it looks like he's not interested. He's just like, cool, I'm going to hover around this bot side, contest Raptors on respawn, and uh, make sure that I'm able to keep control of this bot side, so then realistically, Hans and Mickey can't get control here. Nice try up from Adam. Yeah, very positive trade from Adam. Overheats, make sure the flamethrower continues. Broken Blade needs a bit of time to get that gold app card out and locked in. But here comes Yike from the shadows, looking for the lockup flash to save from Adam, immediately laying down his old ult. Broken Blade just staying just on the side, not wanting to walk into the hick box. But they get the flash and they get the ulti out in exchange for Broken Blade's ghost. But look at the immediate response from BDS. Sheo pathing back towards the bot side of the map. This will guarantee BDS some plates onto their AD carry, stealing away camps from Yike as well. I love the response. BDS doing a good job of matching all the sorts of pressure that G2 trying to throw at them in the early game. Yeah, and they just cannot walk forward here. Shao has so much armor. They do not do anything to that Poppy. Ice going to grab the plate. They don't want to overcommit. Happy to give him just that little boon of gold and walk away. Already a Yomu's completed for the Varus. Yeah, and that's why I'm kind of surprised to see them go for the Callista here rather than Varus. Because I was looking going, okay, well, if you want to try and contest like mid push to let Breeby uh, do his thing in the mid to late game, you kind of need the Poke Varus to contest that mid wave and have control there. But up and in towards Callista means that now you kind of want to play towards both sides of the map. That's making things very difficult where they want to try and play for BB to push his advantages, get some Void Grubs, play through that. But they haven't really been able to secure their bot lane either because of how much or how good of a job Adam's doing at delaying any sort of pressure topside and how great Ice and Labrov have been working with Shale. Honestly, I, I have less of a problem with the Callista priority and more so the, what they paired up with it. The moment that they saw that Poppy, I feel like that their support options became very hamstrung. Like maybe they wanted to go for things like the Alistair. Maybe they wanted to go for the yeah. Rakan. Like even if they wanted to prioritize a Nautilus by focusing that Twisted Fate, they kind of locked themselves into a position where you could give Adam the answer while also making it difficult to actually find advantages in the bot side. And right now, this Tarek, I don't think that it's necessarily doing anything wrong, but it is very difficult for G2 to find advantages and actually win out on these early skirmishes. And BDS are happy to chill. They know in terms of the scaling, they know they have great team fighting, they know that they can play well around these objectives, and that's where they thrive. The fact that their early game is in a position like this is the optimal setup based on what we've seen from them this split. And I think the tricky thing for G2 when you start to find yourself at an early deficit, and yes, it is only a thousand gold and Broken Blade is doing his best to build a lead out for himself individually. The hard part about being in a deficit like this with a Tarek is reactionary Terra cults are trash. You want to be <laughs> engaging and throwing it down as you're blowing all your cooldowns. So by the time they've got their head on straight and they try to respond, they're not doing any damage to you. If you're getting poked out by Varus and a shockwave comes in, it's already too late to Terra cult. You know, the fight is probably already done and that's going to make it really hard for them to get value out of this target pick. And especially when you look towards this next dragon, right? Because already BDS to push mid, push bot. They're going to set up a ton of vision. You're going to have to try and blind face chase check this essentially as G2 try and get control over this and that's where BDS are happy They're just going to try and look for the pick. Caps caught out here. Ted Pass Presence trying to make sure he can't get a Kuwait. Excellent pushback. Attaching the ball to Shao ended up being the wrong play there. If it had been on the ground it might have caught Caps but because it was put on the poppy the pullback is there. It's ult for ult though. Where's Broken Blade making his way out onto the map? Adam as well. It looks like we're going to have a big brawl around this dragon. Both teams poised and ready to fight. Alt traded for Alt. Immediately engaged now coming out. That's the Tarek ultimate. Yikes still standing for now. Good so far. The front line protected. Broken Blade trying to get some damage down over the wall. G2 forcing their way into the pit, but BDS not going to overcommit. Recognize they're weaker. Give up Ice and walk away. I mean, Ice didn't need to give up his life there. He takes a step too far forward looking for Poke, trying to see if he can get the chains on towards Yike, but he's got the unstoppable uh, coming through from the ultimate, and he's just able to lock down Ice. So big mistake from the BDS AD carry and costing BDS in that game, or in that fight, I should say. Now Caps has he overstayed on the side lane here. LeBrov coming in, but just a little bit too late. Adam clears out the wave, and essentially everything is now even when it comes to gold. Crucially, though, when it comes to the itemization department, big lead for Broken Blade individually. He's going to be the one that we have to kind of track in these fights. Broken Blade, speaking of, now caught out here. On the run, the knock up there from Shao. There's just got to be no way you get out of this one, but he does He's have He's getting flash. out of this one. And you'll always remember <laughs> the day. <laughs> You almost caught the Broken Blade. <laughs>
it cost him everything. Well, they got a TP out from Adam, which, I, I mean, there's lots of ways to look at this. That The advantage <laughs> that BDS has <laughs> is that Nuke still has his TP, so they can have him match on a side lane, and then they can always guarantee numbers advantage. But the, the beauty of Twisted Fade is your ultimate helps you cheat. And I think one of the big things in that last fight was Adam was there just a little bit later, so the Wombo Combo potential of BDS wasn't really an option, whereas the TF could arrive thanks to the ultimate that allowed him to just get into that fight that bit earlier. So very excited to see how we handle these upcoming fights as we get closer and closer to the mid game. It's Caps now in the bot lane. No TP, remember? So numbers advantage for BDS means that they should be able to guarantee this out. Yeah, I think they'll be able to guarantee it, and I want to see him put down a mid. If you can get rid of mid terror, abuse the fact Ice has push against Hansam in the mid lane, it makes it very difficult for you to try and play sides as G2 here. So I think that's why G2 trying to trade this for, hey, we're going to have pressure on bot lane. Yike is going to protect Caps as well. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them transition into this mid play to guarantee mid turret to respond in kind. And I think G2 transitioning that bot tower into the mid tower at the cost of Herald is an excellent deal for them. Breaking mid tier one so crucial. The access they now have to the bot side jungle you can see is significant. They're not going to overplace vision on the bottom side, partially because they don't have wards, but also Dragon's still a pretty decent ways away. It's crazy how the momentum has shifted. BDS heavily invested their resources towards the top side of the map to secure that Herald, right? They committed their TP into the bot side, they then transitioned to mid, pushed in mid, gained control over top. G2 saw that and responded by having Caps isolated push the bot side, while the rest of G2 group mid, and because they had early control over that mid wave, they can use their pressure on bot to collapse into mid to guarantee that tower. And now G2 have the gold lead, so BDS, like, they're getting run around the map a little bit as we enter this mid game. This has been the focus of G2, this whole split, their approach to the mid game and their macro. So the question is, how will BDS handle this? Because again, they've found themselves in deficits like this before, but it's the team fighting, really, where BDS have always shone this split. And that's why I think BDS kind of stumbled losing that last dragon, right? Because that was kind of their main way of going, hey, in five minutes' time, you have to fight us again. You don't have the tempo advantage. You can't try and play a bunch of side lanes. It makes it very, very difficult. Now that you're only looking at two dragons, you can kind of ignore the next dragon if you really want to with G2 and just look for more of these turrets like they're doing at the moment. And BDS just don't have the pressure on the map or the tempo to cover match them. Trying to force something. Flash gonna go for the W, the nice lockup, instant fog coming in. Excellent equalizer, clean performance thus far. Broken Blade now running, he's gonna get burnt down, Adam. Finding the pick, good kickoff there by Leprop. BDS need to get more out of this exchange. They've already lost the top lane tower. Are they even gonna let the Herald charge? They shouldn't. Pile it up and head for the second one. Looks like they're going to continue the siege. I think this is smart. They need to get something back here. Because look at Caps pushing in the bot wave. G2 also oh, sent... Oh, Mickey has the flash. But they sent Han Summer to mid while that play top was happening. Can they actually secure this tower, though? They have the numbers for the time being. They're going to keep the pressure up. Will G2 try and fight? They can just turn on to G2 members as they come in, though. This is dangerous from G2. Only 1840. There's not really anything else for BDS to get here. The TP from Caps is close. Old from Breed G2 well. shepherding them. Yike on the way in, giving them the opportunity. Give up Shao or get out. Shao should just fall down here. BB on the way in. Mickey throwing down an early aggressive ultimate. BDS just trying to retreat. Broken Blade now coming in, but Queen goes out to safety. Dodges a lot of the initial CC, but now he's going to be in trouble as well. Nice shockwave from Nuke! Punishing Broken Blade for over committing. I mean, the G2 tried to get that fight started. I don't think they realized that Nuke had TP'd in because Caps was still pushing bot side. So, yes, they would get the tier two. It would cost BB his life. But a little bit of over-aggression there from BB on the Twisted Fate. Yeah, because honestly, I think that uh, the moment they saw that TP top, the fact that there were five people, I think G2 could have just disengaged from the fight yeah. immediately. Take advantage of the fact that you kept caps in the bot lane and you were able to get this tier two tower. In terms of goal, G2 still hold the leads, but I think BDS made the correct play here, using the Herald, trying to siege and securing another tower. And then G2 are trying to get something back. The moment this TP comes through, this is the point at which G2 need to disengage, but a bit of an overstep from Broken Blade gets aptly punished, and BDS get that extra bit more by securing that kill on the Broken Blade. Yeah, and they definitely spotted it, because Caps actually stopped his reset on bot side to make sure he could get the tier two and nuke TP in, so BB just not on the same page there and gets punished, so and you can kind of see the, the problems now that will start to surmount, because BDS will get to this next dragon, they try and look for a team for the third, but look at the amount of G2 members on this top side, they want to make sure that... Wait, 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 G2, just going to hard force to the objective Observe here. Observers, can we see? Yeah, Unspotted. perfect. Mickey waiting around, I think he's just clearing vision. Hot Summer clearing tops, so they have no reason to assume yeah, that there are no so many idea. people here. But they have to feel something is up soon. They don't see any G2 members on the map. How much time are they going to give? You see someone go over the wall. They assume it's just normal. And there's the Baron Dawn. Dawn. Stolen away. That's... Uh, and, and this is one of the things that's incredibly unique about the Azir. He's the, the only mid laner in the game right now, other than Cassio, who no one is playing, that can do that. 
that can actually walk up to a Baron that early in the game and say, I have enough damage to essentially solo this out. I mean, that that's... Uh... It's a shame that the replay kind of got in the way of seeing how they, how all of that was set up. But you talked about Dagda, how BDS went straight towards the dragon, right? We know their win conditions. Playing around these neutrals, forcing these 5v5s, it, it's obvious. And, and G2 kind of took advantage of that by sending Han Sama top. They also had Mickey in the enemy jungle, and they're telling BDS, we're using the fact that you're going to dragon to actually control your topside vision. And so then that dance happens around like, oh, it's just a back and forth trading for wards. They did not expect that Barons are just when the Callista isn't at the objective. Yes. There's like yeah. no way they're taking the objective. But again, this is Azir, and then also AD Twisted Fate. These I mean, are Rock champions player, who are just yeah. going to obliterate objectives. It's a, it's a clever macro move for sure. And it does feel like that BDS are just kind of getting run around the map right now. Whoa. They're finding good fights. They're punishing the mistakes that G2 make. But when it comes to the map movements, it feels like the G2 are finding a lot of their edges just by, by playing the map better. But I think this has the, been the downfall of BDS even last year and coming into this year. Yes, their team fight has been spectacular. The individual performances have been significantly stronger. But BDS still struggle when it comes to setting up their sidelines correctly, when they need to reset, how they can try and approach the map, and even just getting vision in the right places at the right time. Well, I think the nature of their comp also kind of forces them to do that, right? Yeah. Like it, you talked about it in the draft. It's really hard for them to actually match on sides. You've got a Rumble and an Orianna, two champions that ideally don't want to be sitting on a side lane, but ideally want to be forcing a 4-1 into then the 5v5. And I think it's also a symptom of a lot of the times we see Adam taking, like, Flash Ghost champions and stuff like that as well. So you can't play outside as effectively. So it's just something that they aren't, haven't been incredibly practiced on. And I think when you look at the identity of G2, you can see how it could be considered a really difficult stylistic matchup for BDS. G2 are playing Twisted Fate top. They played Energizer LeBlanc mid. They're a team who will split you up and never give you a favorable 5v5. G2 are so fantastic at avoiding bad fights and trading objectives positively. And BDS's big strength is finding good fights. If G2 don't give you any fights, it's really hard to play to your team strength. Well, this is what we're going to see. Hopefully the strength of BDS now, because there are still opportunities for them to find these fights, and they are looking for them. Twisted Fate currently sitting in the mid lane, four members of G2 top. Again, BDS they're, they're matching in a 4-1. They're splitting them up. If they ignore the Twisted Fate, he takes towers. Yeah, and that's the problem. you got to move Ice back here. So you're just playing this slow back and forth. And I think a nice call from BDS there to realize that a couple of seconds before that mid wave hit the tower, but now waiting the the... Conga line is not in mid lane, so you can see BDS starting to slowly move back up towards that top side as well to punish G2. So you're not getting full value out of this uh, Baron in the grand scheme of things. Like, no towers were really taken. And so for BDS, yes, some gold went across, but that pressure wasn't really there for G2. A 1.5k gold lead for Broken Blades. Bear in mind, he's 0 2, and he's dead even in farm with Adam. I, I was going to say, size <laughs> is a little bit of fake. This is obviously. You I know, know I know, but like that, it's to emphasize the changes, right? That, yeah. that passive utilization and, and uh, how much gold you can just get on the champ. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's 1 to 6 gold, and then your crit chance, chance to get another 1 to 6. So it's making money moves. Yep. Crypto fans, have I got a champion <laughs> for you? <laughs> Quit chilling NFTs, come play AD <laughs> Twisted Fake. It reminds me of uh, the klepto talk. Do you remember Noggery? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. We used to have to talk about there was like a yeah. gangplank and an Ezreal yeah. with klepto on the same team. Yeah. You're like, guys, it says they're 3k yeah, ahead, but did. they're not yeah. 3k ahead. It's fake gold. <laughs> fake gold. They have not killed anyone. They have not done anything to earn this. They just, their dad has a hedge fund. I don't know what you want from them. Now, the dragon is spawning in 40 seconds. Uh, G2 are trying to get the control over mid and bot. They're using that to set up vision control around the enemy jungle, and BDS are slowly being suffocated out. Shea wants to try and punish G2 as they enter their side of the map. Let's see if he can find something here. He sees Han Summer. Down. Cap's looking for an angle on the side lane. Right as Adam overheats. Clean flash out from Adam. That's uh, an ult committed, though, just before the dragon spawns. Adam has the TP, and so does Cap's. Cap's now no way to interrupt the TP, crucially, if Adam wants to commit. But Cap's does do a lot of damage. Two and a half items. Adam has to be careful if he wants to go for it. BDS again. A lot of engage tools available. They're trying to just bully their way into the enemy jungle. Cap's will destroy terrors, though. Lich frame procs across multiple different uh, terrors is going to make it very, very difficult. So again, it is going to be third dragon going across, but this is what I was saying for G2. I don't think they're going to try and force it. They're just going to try and play at the map, make sure that then from this point on, they're just playing for tempo, playing for leads on turrets, and forcing BDS into their side of the map. So when the next dragon comes up, they don't have access to the map to try and make these sort of plays. Just to fade off. Dash out safety. Tark's done now coming in for the fob. Shao, decent chunk of damage. 
Again, the burst from the side of G2 is not high. They have three sustained damage carries. Big stun by Labrov there to stop the follow-up from Yike. Just barely managed to hit him with the Q. So Yike looking for the ultimate, but wasn't quite able to follow up. So nicely done there to try and keep his uh, his team alive. I mean, Broken Blade lost his summoners in that trade. I think he was still waiting for BDS, ultimately. I think what we've learned is that Broken Blade a little fast and loose. Yeah, yeah. This game. He definitely has been. It, feel, it does feel like his ghost is just up all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also that he's mostly using it to run away from That's questionable true. plays that he may or may not have started. Um, but there's no way he could have vision of them. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> but uh, I will say that... Uh, BDS are still in a good position to turn this game around. The I... fact that they find themselves at Soul Point, that is a big opportunity. The only concern they have is that, like, okay, Baron, we now know, can be taken very quickly. We're going to respect that a lot more. We still see some good vision from them where they just get a little creative with where they put those wards down and make sure they still have information on when this is starting. And right now, they're setting up around this objective. But look at the minimap once again. You see Caps pushing in the bot lane. They're constantly this keeping the this point of pressure. Is that you've got both Broken Blade and Caps who kind of just want to live on a side lane, but... Shea was all armor, and Caps is, I think, G2's effective only source of damage. So while I love the Caps side lane routine, it always looks good. If G2 ever do want a team fight, this is the only but, guy. This is the guy you need to look at. But I mean, this is what they've done. I mean, now you've got two level advantage and Rabadon's and Push he's gone. Back. There, Adam, you've just got no chance. There's too many soldiers. You're just one man against an empire. Caps now taking him down. G2 immediately started the objective. Sheo and LeBron can try to get into the pit. There's no magic damage there yet, so Sheo can survive for a decent amount of time, but the TP now coming in. Caps is finally going to be here. Sheo, making it ready to go for the wall if he needs to. 3k getting lower. Varus ultimate there. They'd love to knock a jungler out, but they're taking their time. Poppyall not going to connect. Oh, oh. Varus Arrow gets it done! <laughs> Gets the kill onto me, or it's Minky. The Baron will still go towards G2, but that was very close. I got the exact oh, same yeah. reaction. Don't yeah. worry. That was a that was a bit of a doozy, but still, G2 get the Baron. Sometimes you have to manifest the moment you want. Yeah. What I wanted was <laughs> okay. the crazy steal. Yeah. 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 And they I went down, it. and they put the game put that notification first. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't even look at Minky's face. Yeah, I yeah, just assumed just, there was a purple worm yeah. there. I was like, he did it. There it is. I mean, okay. Tarek, Baron, very similar looking. Yeah, you know, Mount Targon, he's, he's a big dude. He's jacked. What do you want from me? <laughs> Bit of an oopsie there. Well, I've, been, I've had food poisoning for like four days. So yeah. I'm just, you've got, happy yeah, to not right. be in my bathroom, happy to be here on the desk. So bear with me in this game one. But I mean, G2, the they, they get the Baron off the back of that. And Caps, level 18 on the Azir. Not only does he get the solo kill on the bot lane, this man has been chovying it up this game. Yeah. 325 CS in 28 and a half yeah. minutes. I feel like people started calling VTO EU Chovy and Caps took that personally. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, like, they do this all the time at Caps, especially when he's on his ear. He just gets so much of that side lane farm. And then he just comes in, he's like three levels above ever and goes, what up, boys? I've got Rabadon's death cap, void stuff on the way. I'm like, what are you going to do about it? You've got nothing but you can compete with. It was, it was super interesting, because, Dyke, one of the points you made a uh, bit just as we got into the game was that when we look back at the history of G2 versus BDS, it feels like that they always kind of have their number, right? BDS struggle against G2 when it comes to these best of fives or just these series. Um, and it feels like that even though the early game looked incredibly promising for BDS, they, they got an early gold lead, they controlled the early game well, they were setting up for these objectives. The, they, G2 just kind of made fun of them on the map. Broken Blade Done. TP. Coming in, Broken Blade again. Good sustain damage this time. Shao does not have a lot of MR. Caps just shredding through that life bar. Will be forced to flash out to safety. Caps now following up, doing a bit more, but the entire team is ready to class. Broken Blade ready to interrupt with a stun card. Caps still committing anyway! Goes in, gets one wall to try to make it two, and he gets another! Massive shutdown! Ice gonna grab that one, but Caps already got a double. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, G2 ready to end the game! Caps legit 1v5 in it, and then the rest of G2 are in this bot side! Caps and Broken Blade causing such a ruckus that BDS had to drop everything! BDS. I mean, they, they can keep this going. They have the numbers advantage. Broken Blade is still Splitting pushing in top, top lane. Side. They've got so much pressure. Midway will be coming shortly as well. It looks like it might take a bit of time. I think G2 trying just to end here. I mean, the only problem is Han Summer, not the longest range. Kalista, a little difficult to siege against these turrets. But now with the extra wave in top, it's a question of will BDS respawn in time? X-Flash trying to threaten. 
pose by a little space here. BDS know they've got at least one more life, but double inhibitors down and double side lame inhibitors is tricky. I think they might need to try and TP for this, though. This is the Dragon. It's Infernal, so I wasn't sure if they wanted to try and clear out these waves and immediately try and push on, but it looks like it will be going over towards G2. Don't want to try and toss it away, because one more fight now for BDS, and that's the end of the game. And honestly, with the amount of control that G2 have, you just send BB to one lane, you like the other, you three-man on mid, and you can always just contest Nexus Towers or cracking open mid lane. It feels so difficult for BDS to try and commit from this position. So we look back at this fantastic play from Caps. He's overall had an incredible split. Broken Blade starts this one off by TPing in with the ultimate. Then Sheo gets chipped away. Drake has mentioned it earlier, zero MR, and he just melts at the hands of Caps. He dives in. It, this is an overextension for all intent and purposes. He should die here. And he says, all right, well, if I'm going out, I'm going out with a bang. Flashes in with the ultimate, does as much damage as possible to trade two for one. And with the pressure on bot lane, they unlock the base and they tear it apart. And they avoid a fight around the Inferno Drake as well. And earlier we say BDS have the stronger 5v5 with Caps as strong as he is. I don't know if even if they find that 5v5, they can win it anymore. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, especially Lich Bane is just such a strong item at the moment. And you can see how much damage he gets every time he's able to proc him with his Q or even set up another soldier. So now G2 pushing in the mid. They've got super minions doing the work for them in side lanes. So they're just going to unmask on mid. They don't know where BB is in the map right now. He's been hitting from vision. So that's why BDS is a little bit hesitant to just immediately jump on that play. And I think, again, credit to G2 for navigating the mid-game so flawlessly. They now have such a significant gold advantage that they don't really have to be as worried about facing BDS in a straight-up 5v5. You highlighted a Caps. Incredibly oppressive. Only 3-1-1, one, one, but has a 4.4k individual gold lead just from the amount of side laning he's been doing, from the amount of towers he has been taking for himself. Easy pickup on Baron coming up in about a minute and 11 seconds. And yeah, that gold guy telling you the story. That little little orange bit BDS is promising early game. The rest, <laughs> the G2 elevator this would is, appear. This is what we call the Duff Man. The you know, Duff Man. <laughs> they talked a lot about it, bringing him in to specifically help with their changes to their mid game. And uh, credit to them, their mid game has been impressive to watch. Now, the Twisted Fate Ultimate thrown out once more, largely just for information. G2 know they have numbers in mid, and so their siege begins once more. Now, even the TP coming in from BB, they just want a five-man on this, make sure they're able to get the terror, but the wave may not survive long enough ice on this bar. You've great ability to just clear out waves like that. So, yes, they got it. Yes, they get pushed, but it's going to actually be a reset coming through from G2 because BDS are in position. See if BDS can clear the waves out fast enough to get mid-control from G2 and maybe contest some of the bear vision because for now, the tower's still standing. Hansama going to wander down to the bottom side of the map, pick up a few more Souls of Cinder. Observers, can we just see what BDS see on the map right now? Because it feels very dark. They see Hansama <laughs> taking their wolves. <laughs> you can see that they've mainly just got entry wards right now, and they have to commit this vision just to gaining some access. Now the Baron is spawned, they're forcing their way in. They don't have that mid-wave control. They use their numbers to force their way through the jungle, and now it becomes this contest over vision once more. Control wards, though, refreshed, being invested by G2 to suffocate BDS. And look at that bot wave stacking up. Nuke is trying to answer on the top but someone has to go and answer bot, and that's going to be G2's window to force a fight. Yeah, this is where BDS want to try and find that fight, though. BB has to be with the team, no ultimate available for just a moment, so G2 just trying to play off the pushing waves, make sure that BDS actually can't get access to River to get vision, while B Adam has to go and deal with that wave, so as soon as they see him, they start up firing. But this is not going to be melting. a wave that lasts long, yeah. Nuke Are shock wave. This? Do they want to go for it? Once again, managed to lock down the Baron, lock that one up, follow up fight, not going very well for BDS yet, one knocked out by Sheo, Sheo trying to fire back, Nuka with a shockwave, not going to connect, Cavs finding yet another kill off to the side, and it looks like they're going to be able to return one back, Gaijin amidst the entire team, let's see this damage coming in for the TF, he has to get it done, excellent pushback from Caps. the Crypt Bloom coming through to provide a bit more healing, and in goes Broken Blade, gold card to seal the deal, give him a yellow and get him out of here, it's a triple for the TF. It started off so well for BDS, but they just couldn't match G2 when it came to the mid-game macro. And now G2, they see the Nexus in their eyes. G2 on the push for the finish, dismantling BDS in game one. BDS a promising start, but could not match G2 in the mid-game. Adaptation will be the name of the game as we head into game two. But this one, first blood in the favor of G2. I was skeptical about this draft from G2, I will be honest. I wasn't really sure how it was going to piece together, but an incredibly well played mid game. Props to G2, uh, BDS, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board. 
certainly are. Definitely could be a tough task, but I imagine they have a lot more to show us. We'll just have to see. For now, though, we're going to set into a quick break when we return the analyst desk in game two. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Red Bull gives you wings. Oh. 